So we'll start the tour here in front of the Cathedral of All Saints. This was built in the 1880s in the Gothic Revival style. How's it going, sir? It's built in the Gothic Revival style and it is the central church, central Episcopal church of Albany. And before it was built, there actually wasn't another cathedral built for the Episcopal Church, no major cathedral. So that was the first one. Now here we're gonna walk up Washington Ave. Behind me, you'll see the SUNY administrative building. And that is the building with the most Corinthian columns out of any building in the US. So that's pretty fascinating. So we're walking down to Washington. I'm not quite sure what's going on today actually, but there's a lot of people out in red shirts. So perhaps I picked the wrong day to do this tour, but that's okay. Uh, most of the buildings, most of the buildings I'll be talking about today will be built from the 1840s till about 1920 will be the latest. And like I said, this is really my favorite area of Albany, uh, where we're going to be heading. This is the Albany Institute of History and Art. Pretty cool building. It actually consists of three buildings. The main building uh, is uh, was built by Marcus T. Reynolds, which I've talked about quite a bit and pretty much every video because he's Albany's most prominent architect. This building right here, this is the Rice Building. This is actually Albany's only freestanding Beaux-Arts style building. And of course it's facaded with yellow brick, which I don't know if I talked about this yet, but uh, yellow brick is uh, very common in New York. It's not used for many larger buildings, but it's definitely used for smaller buildings because it's quite expensive. It's actually brick that uh, has a good amount of uh, lime in it, so it's kind of like limestone in a sense. So anyways, that's uh, I thought I would wrap around the building a little bit. It's very cool. Like I said, it's got the three sections, the main section, which I'll capture in B-roll. The main section was developed by Marcus T. Reynolds. Uh, the Rice Building right here was built by Richard Morris Hunt, or designed at least by him. And this building has gone through a history of kind of different, you know, like, like every building has gone through its history of what happens in it. And now it's just basically a regional uh, art facility. But anyways, that building goes all the way back, or the organization that uh, is housed in the building now, the Albany Institute of History and Art, traces its roots all the way back to Robert Livingston, one of the founding fathers. And it started as the, the Society for the Promotion of Arts, Agriculture, and Manufactures, I believe. I'll put it in white text. I think I got one of those words wrong. But that's how it all started, and then it eventually morphed into the Albany history of art. On this street, you'll see a bunch of awesome row houses all built from the 1800s most of them done in the Italianate style
right. Here we're going to be coming up on uh, a building built by state architect Isaac Perry, which we talked about tons of times. Now this building has had quite a history. It was built as an armory uh, initially and uh, for the 10th Battalion of the National Guard. Decades later, in the early 1800s and whatnot, or 1900s rather, it ends up being used as sports conventions arenas. Uh, the WWE, WWE, which was the WWF at the time, in the 60s and 70s had quite a number of matches there. Uh, now it's uh, owned by the Albany, uh, what is it, the, uh, the basically the Albany Basketball uh, Convention League or whatever, I'll, uh, I'll put it in white text. All right, so I just uh, asked the officer down the street what was happening here. Uh, and on Lark Street, there's Art and Lark, and then in Washington Park, there's a, a Pride Festival. So I was unaware of that, so I did my tour kind of on a bad day because, uh, hey, but it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, we're walking on Washington Park right now, um, or at least the houses surrounding Washington Park. That's where I thought I'd start because, uh, I mean, look at these houses. Marble staircase. Uh, most of these built in the mid-1800s, the late 1800s. Uh, a lot of governors lived here, uh, former state governors. So this is kind of the really, uh, I would I would say this is one of the more wealthy areas uh, of Albany for sure. And then in New York and everywhere, you know, the closer you are to a park in these cities, the more the value of the homes go up. And so this was kind of built as a neighborhood for the wealthy surrounding Washington Park. And there's two main designers uh, of most of these buildings. Um, that would be H. H. Richardson, which who designed Albany City Hall. If you remember, I covered that in my first video. And he designed many other buildings in Albany. He was also a prominent architect. But in a second, I'm gonna take a walk through. We're gonna go into Washington Park, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about Washington Park. But um, I think this would be a good time to talk about, look at this, this is red brick. So the redder the brick is, so this is like more example, more clay. And then the yellow brick, like I said, has more lime in it. And so the different color, the colors of brick is all the composition of the material and they're mined in different quarries and whatnot in different places more brownstone how's it going guys so anyways um What's cool about Albany, and what's nice about Albany, and kind of my first impressions, because I lived in I lived in multiple cities, um, and multiple towns, and uh, kind of my impressions of Albany is that it, it's really nice. If you're looking for somewhere that's kind of like smaller, it's kind of a smaller city, you know, and you have good access to hiking, good access to other larger cities but you won't, don't want to be in the middle of it all, Albany's a great place to start. The problem is city planning and a lack of real economy here um, has caused some hard times and it's not quite as safe as it looks. So that's the only thing I'll say about Albany, but in terms of the weather here, walked here because here's a, another church. This is the first Presbyterian church. Another beautiful brownstone. Albany really likes making their churches in brownstone, which is unfortunate because brownstone uh, costs and takes a lot to upkeep.
All right. Let's cross over. As you can see, that church, uh, it's hanging the pride flag. A lot of churches have kind of changed their ways and become way more accepting of that. And I think that's a good thing. All right, now we're washing, walking into Washington Park. Oh, but what I was talking about with Albany is the weather. You really can't beat the weather here in New York. You're, you get a constant breeze. It's not too humid, you know, because I, I grew up as a child in Connecticut, and it's very humid down there. Here it's much more uh, breathable. Anyways, let's talk about Washington Park, which looks a little bit like a mess right now because of all the cars there were. But I'll walk under these beautiful trees. Let me make sure this is rolling too. Ah, oh, perfect. So Washington Park is an example of Olmsteadian architecture. Uh, and Olmsteadian architecture is a word that's rooted from the man Frederick Law Olmsted. And Frederick Law Olmsted, he designed Central Park in New York City. I don't know if you know about that, but uh, Central Park in New York City is probably the most popular park I'd say in the world. And kind of the Olmsteadian idea is to form and design the landscape to seem as if it wasn't designed. And so what they were and so the kind of idea is to make something as natural as possible and something that just seems like a walk in nature, but a little bit more of a cleaned up version of it. Now this park is fascinating because this park goes all the way back to the city charter of Albany in 1686. goes all the way back to 1686 and it was originally used as gunpowder storage um, then it was just kind of like square grounds and parade grounds and then it was a cemetery and now it's obviously no longer a cemetery so there are some uh, stories of hauntings and spooky shit, and it's a little bit dark, but uh, Washington Park is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I actually should have went here uh, early in the day when Tulip Fest is happening, because Tulip Fest will happen here. And Tulip Fest is, you know, they got all the beautiful tulips everywhere. Continue the video when we get to the lake here in Washington Square Park. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep walking. It's quite nice. See this big line of benches? This is what I love about New York. When they put a park in, they put enough benches that when things get busy, everybody's got a seat, or a lot of people have got a seat. And that's what I've always loved about Central Park, all the parks in New York City. You know, and uh, it's kind of funny because, you know, when you go through this park, a lot of people won't even realize it, but they'll compare it to Central Park and not even know that it's built on the same uh, principles. So I'm going to walk towards the lake now. So like I said, it's uh, Olmsteady and another one of the things that Central Park featured is Central Park featured not only monuments, but it featured a lake house, a lake, and a footbridge, which you'll find here.
when I continue the video. We'll take a look at that. All right, we're walking alongside the lake in Washington Park here. As you can see, we've got a fountain and a beautiful lake house. And I'm sure as you can see, maybe behind me, if I turn around on the shore here, you'll see the footbridge. And we'll walk that footbridge. Anyways, I love this meandering path along the, along the lake. Look at the little ducks. And like I said in the first video, you're uh, about four and a half hours, I think, from Boston. Four or so from Montreal. You've got about two and a half hours, like if you take the train, uh, drive about the same to New York City. You're close to a lot. You're about an hour from the Adirondacks. You're about an hour from the Catskill Mountains. It's a really good area to be if you like diversity of landscape. Now diversity of culture, Albany might not be the best place, but diversity of landscape for sure. Now this is the beautiful footbridge. Not quite as nice as the ones in Central Park but it is nice. And what I love about New York State is the state kind of uses the same lamps uh, for a lot of areas. Like those lamps just reminded me of uh, Central Park. And the reason why I enjoy that is because it keeps kind of like a, it gives the state a flavor, a feel to it, uh, a distinct look. But anyways, I think I'm gonna end the tour here. Maybe I'll end the tour showing you a little bit of what's going on Art on Lark. You know, cause I crossed through that when they were just setting up. But maybe I'll cross through the section when things are a little, a little wild. And I'll show you why they call Lark Street the heart of Albany. But, but uh, for now I'm cutting this. And we'll continue there, maybe. So another thing I forgot to mention here. Oh, what the heck? That was a little, a little fletching. Yeah. Wonder what bird that is. I believe it's a starling. Starling. The ones that murmurate. Yeah. The huge masses. Yeah. 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 They make they make the crazy sounds and they're like supposedly invasive. Yeah. But they're cool, man. That's, that's <laughs> I was just showing the, uh, there's a performance here or something? Yeah, I don't know what they're playing, what they're doing. But yeah. There's, there's, uh, this is Gay Friars today, and then Art on Lark is today as well over on the Art School. Yeah, I was going to swing around to Art on Lark and check it out, yeah. yeah. I don't know when they started, though. I'm, uh, probably around 11, 10 or 11. 11? Uh, it's 10.30 right now, so... Yeah, it's probably pretty soon. Cool, awesome. I saw him setting up, but... So here you see uh, at the lake house they have the amphitheater. I forgot to mention that. A little amphitheater there. It's really cool. Like I said, it, uh, some, of the, some of the painting reminds me a lot of Alana Castle. So I'll put some white text over it, uh, over the screen, to let you guys know whether or not that is, uh, whether or not that is, uh, like a, like a, what do they call it? They call them, it's like a um, hybrid architecture. I forgot the name for it. I'll put it across screen, but Olana is an example of it where it's, it's got influences from multiple uh, eras and it's even got Persian influence. So that's why I was saying like I wonder if it's got some Persian influence it Would be interesting just with the colors. It looks fascinating So that was the amphitheater and then 
like I said, Washington Park is huge. So like I, I've only walked this like I've only walked like five percent with you guys here. So let me go down this giant hill. Watch this, this is crazy. Dangerous. Not advised. Don't do this at home. Eh, that wasn't bad. So anyways, I'm gonna continue the video going on Art on Lark. We'll check out Art and Lark, because uh, when I was there, they were setting up, and so they're probably done setting up by now. I would imagine they would probably start at 11, it's 10.30, but maybe I'll catch it early. Who knows? Here we have Art on Lark. This is just before everything really gets started here. And so I thought it'd be cool to circle back around and take a look at things as they're actually set up now. Because when I walked here before, they weren't. So this gives you a better idea. And then, by the time it's noon, these streets will probably be flooded. So it's better I get out a little bit early anyways. You know, obviously, tons of craft vendors, art vendors, like we talked about before, the Waldorf Tuxedo Company here. Hello, how you doing? Waldorf Tuxedo Company building. Let's talk about this Italianate brownstone building. Beautiful Italianate brownstone. This is the oldest business on Lark Street right now. Uh, it's been in business for 86 years, um, which is quite a record. Let's talk about a business model. And they apparently have an awesome selection, so if you need a tuxedo, there you go. We're gonna walk further down Lark. Or further up Lark right now, because we're actually going from the back. And here we got Trinity Church, United Methodist Church. Like I said, this one I forgot to do my full research on. But it's absolutely stunning. You know, I'll put the uh, white text over to show you know when it was by when it was built and by what architect. Like I said, Lark Street is really cool because it's actually one of the few places in, Al in Albany where there's actually uh, commercial and residential throughout, you know, a, a decent strip of land. And it's nice because it does give you the feelings of maybe, you know, like people call it the Greenwich Village of Albany, which if you're not familiar, Greenwich Village, uh, they're referring to the Greenwich Village in Manhattan. And it does give that kind of feeling when it's busy. <laughs> like I said, a lot of these buildings all built mid 1800s to the early 1900s cool because you can see the cobblestone here and then you can see the Alfred E. Smith building towering above everything which if you remember from our first video the Alfred E. Smith building was the Art Deco building was the tallest building in Albany before Corning, Corning Tower I love these old like pizza signs that they do. They're pretty fun, cool.
Alright, we'll cross down, not washing it now. And I covered the uh, I covered the Washington Armory before. But I want to show you guys the uh, Walter E. Merchant House, which uh, has the carriage house behind it. I wonder if I could get a shot of it, but I doubt it, because the carriage house is really, really hidden behind. So here's a, a better view of the State Armory, which we talked about was uh, an armory for the 10th Battalion of the National Guard. And then over the years, it, uh, you know, it was different sports convention arenas. The WWE and WWF hosted, uh, hosted tournaments there. And now it is owned by the Albany County Basketball and Sports uh, Association. I, I definitely screwed that up. But it's you get you get the idea. Okay, when I did my initial walkthrough uh, down Washington Ave, I forgot to mention this house because it was kind of hidden away right there. This is the Walter E. Merchant House, and uh, this was built in the 1860s. This is an example of a home built in the Renaissance style. Uh, if you remember the second video I did, um, I looked at the Trust Company building and that was built in a Renaissance Revival style. Well, this is a, a uh, home built in the Renaissance Revival style. And unfortunately, you cannot see the carriage house behind it. But this does have a carriage house behind it. Fortunately, you can't see it. I wanted to show you guys Maybe, maybe if I wrap around, I might be able to see it from like the other side. And if I can, I'll definitely continue that and I'll show you guys. But cool home, Renaissance Revival style, uh, brownstone, carriage house, which we couldn't see. Cool stuff. Here is a beautiful building. Look at that Italian eight brownstone. That is cool. <laughs> and this here, if you look at the uh, the window hoods, look at that. Stuyvesant. I wonder if Stuyvesant lived there. That is uh, that is immaculate. I've never seen a window hood that cool. I'm not gonna lie. And window hoods, just just to let you know what the window hood is. Is it's the surrounding of a window when uh, when you look at around the window and you see all these protrusions um, that are decorated in different ways that could be considered the window hood. And then when you look under the roofs and you see these kind of uh, they're like roof hoods. Those are actually called cornices. They're not called roof hoods, but that's what they look like. This is a perfect day in Albany. I mean, it is June 11th today, and the weather is, it, it has been 75 degrees, sunny and windy for like the past two weeks here. Uh, and it's only been raining at night. Sometimes you just get lucky. Because last year, I'm not gonna lie, there was so much rain in this state, and I was getting kind of concerned. I was like, I don't know if I wanna live here <laughs> because of the amount of rain. But this year is a better example of uh, the climate here. That is a really cool stoop entrance. This building, built in 1917. Wow. All right. So now we're gonna. I'm gonna cross back. I'm gonna cross back around. Back to where we started. And I'm gonna show you what I believe is a Federalist style. And if I'm wrong about this being a Federalist style building, you know, correct it. I'll put some white text over it with an asterisk. But I am pretty sure this is a good example of a Federalist style building, which uh, I have yet to show an example of.
That's the rice building, we talked about that earlier. Well, here we have an example of Federalist style. See how they've got the uh, kind of Corinthian-like columns right around the door. Up top, you've got these very symmetrical, geometrical uh, cornices above the hoods. And then, right about where you would see the, uh, what would be the window hoods, you see what looks like kind of like a keystone set in the middle that's uh, very indicative of a Federalist style. Like I said, if I'm wrong, then I'll put it over the video. But I'm pretty damn sure on this one. All right, so that concludes the uh, that concludes the tour here. I uh, want to thank anybody who watched. This will probably be conclude. This will probably be the conclusion for my Albany series. Next, I might do a walk through Cohoes, and then spoiler alert. I'll probably be living in the city uh, come, come late summer, fall. So I will be having tons of New York City videos as well, where I will explain everything I can learn. There might be more of a gap there because I have a lot to learn about New York City. You know, Albany's been my uh, place for the past few years, or at least the surrounding areas. And thank you for watching. It depends. Am I guessing that you love me? Dreaming dreams of you in vain. I'm confessing that I love you over again. Confessing that I love you, darling, do you love me too? I'm confessing that I need you, honest I do. Need you every moment, in your eyes I read such strange things, but your lips deny the truth. Your answer really changed things, making me blue. I'm afraid someday you leave me, saying, Can't we still be friends? If you go, you know you grieve me. All the life on you depends. And that you love me <laughs> Dreaming dreams of you in vain I'm confessing that I love you Over again Thank you very much We are a hot Tuesday by the way Jonathan Green on clarinet
Larry Stallman on bass, Nelson Gage on rhythm guitar, and I'm John McBride singing. Are we going to go one way and then back up?